Hi guys! In this tutorial, I will show you how to compose a 3D building into photography step by step. You can go through this tutorial with me. On my website, you can download the photography I shot for the purpose of this tutorial in my beautiful city. The link to the download will be in the description below the video. I shot this photo with a Sony a7 IV camera and ended up with this RAW file. If you don't do photos by yourself, you should receive a RAW file from your photographer. This kind of file stores way more information than a simple JPEG file, so you will have more control in post-production. I will just quickly go through what I did here, and if you want to know how to use Lightroom, make sure to check out the tutorial I've done specifically about visualization post-production in Lightroom. I will link it at the end of the video, so you can watch it next. Let me show you two important things that we have to do with photos that I didn't cover in the render tutorial. First, we have to enable lens corrections. Lightroom automatically detects what lens shot the photo and removes the distortions and vignetting. It's important because in 3ds Max we won't have any distortions. Vignetting is less important and you can set it up as you like it. The second thing is denoising. I will denoise the photography as my render will come denoised as well. I will later add some noise on top of both of them to blend the render and photography together. Here is the before and after. We are ready to export the photo. I will export it as JPEG and set the long side to 5000 pixels. Let's jump to 3ds Max. Here is the city model exported from Google Earth. You can download this 3ds Max file as well. Remember, the link is in the description below. If you want me to create a tutorial on how to export from Google Earth to 3ds Max, give this video a like and let me know in the comments. I will hide the model for now and adjust the resolution. We have to put the same dimensions as our exported photography. This information is sorted in the file properties. Go to the details tab. And here it is. Great. Now we have to add the photo as a background. Click Alt plus B and use the option Use File. Choose the photo location and click Apply to Active View. Great, we are ready to start the perspective matching process. Go to the Utilities tab, choose the Perspective Match option and click Show Vanishing Lines. We have an error that we are not in the perspective mode. Let's switch it here. As you can see, the lines appeared on the screen. Now we have to align them with the photo's perspective lines. The blue lines are vertical. Great! Next, the horizontal lines. Try to be as precise as possible. I think this is good enough. Now let's create the corona camera. Make sure you turn off the target. Click on the perspective viewport and click Ctrl plus C shortcut to create the corona camera from the view. Also, let's jump to the settings. Using the same focal length we shot the photo inside 3ds Max is super important. This information is stored in the file properties, so you don't have to worry about it during the shoot or if you are not the one who is taking the photo. Here is the focal length info. We have a 35mm image sensor format and use a 70mm focal length. Let's put 35mm here. You can see that the focal length is really close to 70, which is great and it means I did a good job with perspective matching. Let's set it to exactly 70. Here we don't have to worry about other settings as the whole building will be in focus. Now let's unhide the model and match it with the background. The easiest way is to move and rotate the camera. I was standing around here and look this way. If you want to learn architectural visualizations from scratch or looking forward to improve your skills, we'll teach you how to create various types of visualizations, including exterior and interior scenes, both nature and urban scenarios, basically all about Arvis. Go to arvisartist.com, join the course and become a true artist. Let's move the camera up. looking good, but the foreground part of the model is really annoying. Let's detach this part so we can see more clearly. I will hide this part for now. Looking good, we have some misalignment on the edges, but the Google Earth data is not 100% accurate. 
The center looks good though. Also, next, let's adjust the 3D model to our surroundings. On the BLD layer, you will find the box representing our building. All we have to do is to move it and rotate it so it sits in the right place. We have to check it only with the photo background as well. I will move it back a bit. Great! Now let me show you how to align the model nicely with the X and Y axis. We can link everything to our box. Including the camera so our view stays in the place. Now just move the box to 0, 0 point and reset the rotation. Everything moves with it, and the view stays as it was. Great progress! We are ready to set up rendering. We need to have the surroundings cast shadows on our main building, but we don't need it rendered. We can go to Settings and choose the Render Only the Selected Object ID. I will set it to 1 and set the same value in the box object's properties. Here it is! Working well, but we have to delete intersecting parts of the surrounding model as well as things that block the view. I will also add a plane to block any light coming from beneath. Let's apply the corona material to the plane and the box. Let's delete some parts of the surrounding model. I need to delete this part as well. It's not a problem as we need this building only to block the light. Looking good. Here is the difference with and without surroundings. Let's render the 5K version of the image. Normally, I would need to pay more attention to lighting I would use an HDRI map with similar clouds as on the photograph, but the standard lighting is fine for this tutorial. Save the image as EXR. Let's move to Photoshop. We have to open the main photo and place our render on top. Import alpha channel as transparency. Looking good. The first thing we have to do is to remove the parts of the billing we are placing from the photo. I will use the generative fill option. I will use the Remove tool to delete these two pieces. Great! Now we have to create the mask. In this case, I prefer to do it by hand using a brush, as it will give me the most accurate result. Of course, I will speed up this process. Automatic selection methods would not work in this kind of situation where a lot is going on. Here is the final result. It was quite a long process, but the result was really good. The last step is to use adjustments to blend the photo with 3D. We can add some adjustments only to the 3D building. Click this icon if you want your adjustment to work only on the layer below. After that, we can add some adjustments to everything to blend it even more. I like using LUTs in this case to match the colors quickly. I will also add the vignetting effect. Lastly, I will add some noise to everything. And maybe a slight motion blur to imitate a camera shake. Hope you like this video and will use this knowledge in your future projects. If you want to learn all about architectural visualizations and animations, join our online course. You can also watch more of my videos here on YouTube. Bye-bye!